we are going to be doing a shaker card. And we're going to be doing it a little bit different than we normally do. Um, I am actually going to be doing two cards, one video for you guys. Um, and we're going to start with the shaker card and then we're going to do our pop-up card. We're using the same papers for both cards so that you can pick your paper once and make a couple of them. Now I have picked out my inks. I'm using close to my heart. I don't know if these are discontinued or not, guys, but pick an ink that complements your paper. Um, I'm using Carolina and Pewter. That's what I'm using here. And all I did was just tap my makeup brush. I got these on Amazon. There's a link below. They're just makeup brushes. And I just tapped it and then ran over the edges of my ink. I blotted off on my paper and then just lightly colored it. I didn't want a big uh, start white and I didn't want it to be too much color. I didn't want to take away from the card. So we're going to start with our base and if you're using a white base you won't need this piece because I'm using a navy blue for my base because I love dark bases. I just don't do them often because you can't put your sentiment on there and you can't stamp on there. So unless you use a white panel or a vel uh, vellum. So now I've got my, I want to make sure that it's got the right base here. <laughs> All right, so now I've got that done and I'm going to open this up and we're going to I'm just going to use art glitter glue. You can use your tape runners, whatever the, it is that you want to use. I like art glitter. It's not lumpy. It's not bumpy. It dries fast, matte, and clear. So we're just going to line that up and get that inside there. And I just had a simple I love you written. I used um, the Cricut Blueberry .40 tip on this card. Super easy, super simple. Blue Cricut cardstock, white Cricut cardstock. And this is from the Natalie Malin um, Divine Peonies paper pack from Cricut. I don't know if it's still available, guys. Um, but pick a paper. You can, you can probably find something that complements just as well. So I kind of like that there. <clears throat> but you're not going to be gluing it on. This is the only thing that is not Cricut. This was some paper that I had from Tonic Studios, and it just kind of blended in, but gave that little pop of color. So I decided I was gonna go with it. I did ink the back of it to knock down some of the start whiteness. Um, you don't have to. So how are we gonna do the shaker card without any foam tape? This is just a cellophane bag. You can get these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, all sorts of places. They go on sale all the time. They come in different sizes. They're just clear bags uh, for your cards, corsages, things like that. You can find them over there. You can also get them on Amazon. So I'm going to take my card and I'm putting my front. This is my opening. So I want the front. And you can see that this bag is too big for what I'm doing here. So there is a way for me to fix it. I think I'm actually going to go this way with it. So I've got that in there. My flap to the back. Yeah, I'm going to go this way with it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get my tape runner here. And I'm going to go on the cellophane bag itself right here where the edge of my card is. And I'm going to fold that over, okay, just like that. And it's probably going to pop loose, but that's okay. Just going to come in here and run some more tape runner on this edge here so that I can get that to stick down on that side, okay. I'm just going to, I'm not going to peel that yet. These sequins are from Tuesday morning somewhere around in there. Uh, I believe it was Tuesday morning. I've had them for a while and I just thought these would be really pretty in there. So I'm just going to drop, you want to drop them all to the front, not the back, like I'm doing. There we go. Just kind of 
kind of bend it so I can get my hand in there or whatever device you're using so that they go to the front. There we go. I'm just going to shake some in there. That's a little that's a little more than I wanted. I'm going to get rid of some. And I've got some iridescence and all sorts of colors. I'm just having all sorts of sequin problems today. There we go. Get to the front. Almost all of them to the front. We're going to live with it. So now I've got those in there. And I'm just going to peel this tape back. Take it off. Keep this on nice and flat if you can. And we're just going to stick it down. Okay. I'm just going to trim that off this edge. Don't need it. Don't need it. And then I'm going to, I've got some tape runner over here, but I need more. I'm just going to we're just going to fold that over. And now we have our shaker. How easy was that? Super easy. You don't have to do it with all the foam tape, all of that stuff. I'm going to throw my sequins back in there. I may use a couple more of them. But I thought it matched my butterfly pretty well. All right. So now we have that ready. I am going to be using some tearing tape here and you can get this on at Hobby Lobby Michaels anywhere that you want but because of the plastic I'm, I am going to use tearing tape and that's just what it is it's just double sided tape with a release liner on it and it's good and sticky should be enough. I'll do a couple more little pieces here just in case. So now I've got that on there. Next I want to do my ribbon. And I said I've got sequins everywhere, don't I? All right. And I am using, I don't know if this is still available. It's just what I had on hand. Use what you've got. This is a reversible ribbon. And one side is like green, and one side is like a blue. It's their peacock, I believe, was the name of it. Um, pretty peacock, or an old olive. One side is old olive, one side's pretty peacock. And you're probably going to need about, I don't know, 20 inches or so. I'm just going to cut my ends. And I'm going to use a little bit of art glitter glue here, just so I have some slide. And I'm going to place these two pieces together. And you want to make sure that you've got that lined up good because your holes in there, you're going to need to get that ribbon in. And then we're just going to place it in one end and bring it. And I did that green side up. I wanted the blue side up. Make sure you had it going the way you want it. If you used a green base, maybe and reverse your colors, you might want to go with the green up. That's a really tight area, so you may have to trim your ribbon a couple of times. And I'm just going to bring this. I'm going to decide 
where I want that to land and I think that's about where I want it right there so I'm just going to get my tape runner again and I'm just going to run even over the top of the ribbon everything and you can pop dot this up and I did mine got off there a little bit make sure you get yours on straight and mine's off a little bit oh well I'm going to stick that down and the beauty of using your tape runner if you don't get it on there straight the first time you can pull it back up and re-stick it so now I'm just going to bring this other ribbon around and we're just going to tie our bow where I need extra hands. Oh well. I'm going to try that one more time. <laughs> Keep that ribbon as flat as I can. Come here, you little booger. There you go. And my tail's on the wrong side there. I had to adjust my ribbon. I think that was what my issue was. So I, I just adjusted it down from my tag. There we go. Just gonna loop. I think I do better with my bunny ears. That's what I'm gonna do. There we go. I was trying to get it to be blue on both sides, but that wasn't working out for me. If you can get yours to do that, that's awesome. But maybe I can twist it here and get it. There we go. There we go. I just twisted it and got it. So just tighten your bow up and work with it. And then we're just going to trim it off. I'm going to get my good scissors for the trim here. And guys, you can still adjust if you need to, just a little bit on that ribbon and pull it in. So it's not hanging off the end of your shaker. There you go. Do you want it to fit in the envelope? And then we're just going to place that right... And this still doesn't look straight to me. There we go. Alright, and now we're going to come back over here and tear off our tape. And that's just going to help that ribbon stick down back here on this piece, and that's fine. Peeling off that release liner. And again, on this end, it's going to help hold that ribbon right there, and that's fine. I just want the release liner, not the whole thing. I'm just going to give it a rub. I have tape on my fingers, I think. There we go. It's 
static electricity take something there we are. and now I am just for extra measure going to run a bead on that ribbon now that I have it set where I want make sure you got your card going in the right direction I have to stand up so I could see Just gonna press all that down. How cute is that? I might bend the wings up just a tiny bit, not much. I'm gonna use, I think, a couple of foam dots for this guy. If I can hide them, yeah, that's hidden. just don't want to be able to see them once we put it down peel those release liners and then decide where you want your butterfly I think I want mine to go this way how super cute is this now I'm going to Grab some Nuvo drops, I think, and put in place here. This will look a lot better if you line that up. I messed up. I said get it straight, and I didn't get it straight. <laughs> that happens, right? Okay, and I am using my Nuvo drops. I'm, I cannot get rid of that piece of paper. Um, this is double denim crystal Nuvo drops. I'm just going to... Make sure it's coming out well. And that's just going to give a little bit more dimension in those dots. You can use pearls, whatever it is you have. You can leave it without anything, it's going to look good either way. And this will take about 30 minutes to dry and then our card will be done oh I like that that's pretty so now you have your shaker without the foam tape super pretty super easy quick card so there's your Mother's Day card we're gonna set this off to the side to dry and we're gonna work on our other one using the same materials I'm just going to cap my glue here for a minute because we're not going to be using that for a moment uh, I'm going to clean up my space here so you guys can see what I'm doing and I'll be right back okay guys and here is our second card now this one you're going to have I cut mine backwards. I didn't flip my paper over. So now my texture is going to be to the inside, but that's okay. Make sure that you fold on your score lines. And use my bone folder. Now you've got two more score lines here. And you're just going to do the best you, I think. I fold it this way. That's what I'm going to do. I did it right. I just had my scores on the wrong side. So you've got your scores to the outside. These diagonal ones right here. They're to the outside. And you're just going to fold that over. And I'm just going to fold it over the other way. Make sure you stay on that score. We're just getting it started. All right, and you can open that up and give that a pinch, and then open that one up and give that a pinch. And then we're going to pinch this one back the other way. Go this 
way with it. This way with it. And then we're just going to give it a rub. Okay. So it should look like this when you're done. Just like that. Okay. Now you've got several panels here. One of these uh, pattern panels are larger than the other. And it won't fit but one way. Okay, so if you look and you try to put it on the inside, it's not going to fit. Okay, it'll fit down here, but this isn't where it goes. That means it's the front piece. Okay, and you can also tell if you take this piece and line that up over the top, you can see it doesn't match. So that means that is the front piece. If you bring this one in and you flip it over and they are the same size, those are your inside pieces. Okay, just like so. So we're just going to take our glue. This is a fun, simple, easy card too. We're going to line that up to the inside there. And then this piece I want to do, I want to knock it down like I did my other. And I'm going to show you guys how I did that. I'm going to open up my inks. And I'm using the same pewter in Carolina. And I'm going to grab my flowers out too because I'm going to... I'm going to have a little play with those as well. Don't need my green pieces. I am going to get this other white piece right here. I just want to knock some of this darkness down. So I'm just tapping and I'm just going to tap some off. And then I'm just going to go around those edges. And it looks when you just look at the cardstock, it looks like you really haven't done anything, but you can see here there is a color difference, and you can go as intense as you want to go on this. Totally up to you. That's enough color for me, and you can see it once you get it against that white, how it changed colors. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. smoky up those edges a little bit. Perfect. And then I don't have that stark whiteness. Just knocks it down just a little bit to warm it up with my other colors. While I've got my ink out, I'm going to go ahead and hit this one. I think I've got enough of that pewter, but I'm just going, to, just going to go over this. And I use that same glue, blueberry pen for this card. Now on the front of the other one, I forgot to tell you guys, I did use for the front, I used uh, the extra fine gel pen black. I'm getting message dings all over. And I'm going to do all of my little flowers as well. And this butterfly. I did a backing. I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. But I'm going to, I am going to ink down the back of my butterfly on this one. Because it may show a little bit. Just to give it a little bit of interest and knock that down without affecting the front. And then I'm just going to do the same on this white piece here. Just to give it some interest if it peeps through the holes. Like I said, I'm not sure I'm going to use it. see. 
that's good. So just check your pieces and work with them. want heavier in some areas than others. I want it to stand out. If you don't like it or you mess up, flip it over and do it on the other side. This is the textured side, so I'm just working around with those. I just want them to be close, give it some extra color. I really like more blue than I got. A little bit more gray on there than I wanted, but that's okay. a little more blue on that to the center just play with it and that's better I like that I think I'm just gonna stick with the blue on that one on the white stark on that blue. I want to give it a smokier look on that blue. And it may be totally wrong. It may not work out like I want it to, but we're going to see. Just going to go with the blue on these. should be darker than our larger petals anyway. Okay, I'm going to live with that. So once you've got everything inked up, my straight pen for my glue trying to get away from me there, I can set those to the side. And now we're finished inking, we can finish putting this together. So we're just going to take this panel, and you can ink these panels too if you want. I just feel that they have enough to them. I didn't want them to be too busy. I'm just going to put that panel on there. Oops, I forgot my... No, I didn't. I inked that. Yes, I did. I already inked that. And then this piece goes here. I thought that maybe I didn't ink it, but I did. That was the first piece I did. I'm just going to place that on. And we're going to grab this one and we're going to place it on. Mesh. Yay! All right, now let's do the front. And I did a green panel for this, and I think I'm gonna do a ribbon on this. I think, I think. I'm just going to wrap it around to the back. Do I want the green side out or the blue side out? Something we have to check. That's the blue out. That's the green out. Oops. Oops. 
I'm going to go with the blue out. So I'm just going to take my tape runner. If you don't have double-sided ribbon, then you won't have to worry about that. But. You can use your double-sided tearing tape. I think I may have to. It doesn't like to stick to the ribbon. It's enough to get me going anyway. I think I'm going to go right there where that point is. Doesn't look straight because it isn't. That's better. And I'm just going to add a little bit more tape runner there just to hold that down. And then I'm going to place that over this panel. Spring is coming, guys. Can't wait. All right. So now I have that one. And we're going to place that panel right on the front. I decided to go with the blues and greens this time. Move away from some pink and red. I got sticky on here. I'm going to get rid of this. Guys, give me just a second here. I apologize makes it easier for you guys to see too if I don't have a big mess down there and I don't know that I'm going to use all of those flower pieces yet I haven't decided I am going to go ahead and place this piece and I think I'm going to use some foam dots on that Lift it up. Mm, there's a different height. I was going to use a small one in the center. Don't want it to sag, so make sure you use plenty. So you pop it up. This one a little bit straighter than I got that other one. There we go. So now we have that ready. I lost my butterfly here. There we go. Now I am going to get one of these is different. That's a smaller one. You'll want to get the large and the small ones correct. And then I'm just going to use my flower pad, and let's see, I think this one will be enough. Just going to actually go and flip it over down in the center and up on the petals. Just going to break that paper down a little bit. And if you don't want to shape yours, you don't have to. All right. And then 
I'm just going to do a little glue and stagger that right there. I don't know that I want to use the white. I don't know that I want to use two. I think I'm just going to go with the blue and offset them. You can do yours how you want. Of course, it's your flower. I think I'm just going to go with the blue. My light blue paper. You can cut your white from light blue and layer it up more too. And grab these. I know I had another one of those somewhere here, but that's okay. Just a little bit of play, give it a little texture. And we can just flip them over and push them down in the center. And that'll give them some shape. I do apologize with my phone constantly. There, I like that. So I'm going to go with my smaller one. One moment. Okay. All right, so now we have our flowers. Decide how you want to do them. And I'm thinking, and you can hang over this edge, guys. Remember, this is going to be in your envelope. This is an A2 card. Four and a half, four and a half by five and a half. Four and a quarter by five and a half, something like that. So you can hang off the edge. Use your grid, and you can see I can go up to here and up to here with that. It's okay if it hangs off. So I'm going to place one right here. And one right here. I want them to kind of overlap. Touch the ribbon. And then I'm just going to grab that center. I could have probably went darker blue with this, but that's okay. It's still going to be pretty. And I just, this you can put under there. Again, they're, they're in the file. I just didn't feel it needed it. I've got enough green with that green border. If you don't have a green border, you may want to use that. I just don't see the need here. So I can't if I want to use a sequin in the middle of that. I've got heat tape on my tweezers. I think I do. I like that iridescent one. use those two and some Nouveau drops right in the center so I'm just gonna just enough to hold that sequin down and we're almost through with this card So now I have to decide, do I want to put that flower in here, and do I want to layer that up? I don't think I want to use that white layer. Again, these pieces are in the file. You can use what you want on there. not going to 
hang out on the outer edge of the card. So whatever it is, whatever piece that you use, I am going to temporary, just going to put a little stick on there and get that right about where I want it. Okay. I'm not going to worry on my flower. And I'm just going to make sure that it closes and it's not getting in the seam up here. Or if you've got a taller image, make sure it's not, when you close it, it's not hanging out down here. Um, those are the things you want to take into consideration. And that looks good to me, so I'm just going to glue this guy right here. I'm going to take my gum eraser and get my extra sticky off of there. get these I haven't cut this one you can get these on Amazon scrapbook.com and I usually just cut mine down because the edges get really sticky sometimes that way if you've got any stick there it will release that and I'm going to place on the inside place that flower on that panel and then I'm just going to add a couple of little sequins in here I think I'll go with one of these flat colored and if you're going to do Nouveau drops on the inside you have to do the inside and then the outside or vice versa you don't want to do them both at the same time That'll be a mess. There's one of those small ones. Mm, that's a miscut. Don't want that one. There we go. I'm trying to knock a few out here so I have something to select from. There we go. I want to get a couple of small ones. I'm just not getting along with my sequins today at all. And he still came up there. They're sticking to my finger more than they are my card. How pretty. Now, I am going to put like three Nouveau drops up here at the top, but I am going to wait until it dries, um, leaving this area for my sentiment. How cute is that? All right, guys, that is basically all there is to this card. Super easy, super simple. And I'm just doing those same double denim drops right in the center of that. And I may put one or two sequins throughout here. I'm going to go and pick through and put a couple of these clear ones through here, but that's all I'm going to do. No need for you guys to watch me fight my sequins. 
I will show you pictures on the cover and in the groups. You guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.